move on to someone I haven't seen in a while. Uh, I'm happy to have him back again, Franz. Franz Bormann, uh, who co-organized the Semantic Media Wiki Conference 2014 in Vienna. So, hello, yeah, hello, hello Franz. This is some time ago, yes, indeed. Yeah, back in the old days, we would meet personally also at SMW cons. Yeah, that uh, would have been nice. We, we, we really hope that maybe next year it will be possible again. So let's see. So Franz is like me, a heavy user of Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, we are not developers, so we are, we, but we are very convinced, I think, what Semantic Media Wiki can do. So I'm interested in what you have to offer this time, and the floor is yours, Franz. Thanks a lot, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for the for the nice introduction. Um, what I'm going to present today, as as um, Ben had already announced, uh, I'm I'm just a user, so this will be much less technical in terms of uh, Semantic Media Wiki but it, it will show uh, another use case in the realm of uh, nuclear decommissioning. <clears throat> As always, people that know me already, this is our um, basic or, or, or uh, main, um, our main business. Um, this time I would like to, to emphasize the decommissioning core ontology uh, that we have de developed in the, in the last year um, as a basis also for um, applications inside Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, part of this project that I present today has been funded by the uh, European Commission under a, a Euroterm uh, research project, <clears throat> and it's uh, the uh, Pleiades, part of the Pleiades project. But I will come to this in a minute. For those who don't need, know me and, and my company, I will give a short introduction and the motivation uh, how we do this or why we do this. Uh, we'll then go into the Pleiades project uh, a little bit. Uh, we'll then tell a bit about the um, DECOM core ontology development and uh, describe the benefits of the ontological approach. So as an introduction, um, IOS is an SME engineering consultancy company. We are um, specialized on, on everything that's hazardous, where other people go out, we go in. So we are... Um, focusing on the decommissioning of complex sites that are mainly nuclear facilities, such as nuclear power plants, nuclear laboratories, research reactors, uh, nuclear fuel cycle, and, and waste management facilities. But we also started recently to look into fossil power plants because we've also seen that, um, <coughs> um, alike, the, the chemical facilities and uh, remainders of the oil and gas industries, um, will be uh, a focus within the next uh, probably 50 years uh, if we look at the overall decarbonization of our, of our societies. Um, we will have to get rid of a lot of facilities and um, a lot of them are really hazardous places. Um, in, in the end, the commissioning is an easy job. You just have to, to separate um, everything um, into, into smaller parts and uh, get the hazardous stuff out. In, in case of a nuclear power plant, you have uh, 700,000 tons of material and you have to pick the right uh, 2,000 tons of uh, um, radioactive waste. The rest is fine. So um, as such, this sounds like a, an easy job. Um, if you look in deeper into it, um, it gets more complicated because these facilities are highly complex. So this is also not only a hazardous, but it's also a highly regulated environment. <clears throat> and this brought us uh, very early into the using uh, of uh, Semantic Media Wiki. And Semantic Me Media Wiki is uh, certainly the backbone of our knowledge, man knowledge management approach. So why are we looking into knowledge management? I mean, we are really a, a very small company. We have less than 10, 10 in, uh, employees. <clears throat> But we are uh, trying to survive to survive in this um, highly regulated environment. And if we look at the at the process of decommissioning, then we see that change management is one of the key things in this environment. Um, if you imagine a, a power plant is is there to produce energy on a daily basis with a very high reliability, 
And of course, this um, has a, a certain organization necessary, and this is a line organization where you have clear hierarchies. But when you go into decommissioning, this certainly turns into a project uh, company. And the overall aim of this organi project organization is to eliminate itself. So there is a lot of changes that are ongoing inside uh, of such a company. There is, of course, a reputational sh change if you uh, think especially of, of power plants. Um, power generation is a um, highly prosperous um, a branch, and, and that means that uh, if you are, for example, the head of a power plant, <clears throat> usually your mother company will like you very much because you bring home a lot of money. But this changes drastically if your power plant is going into decommissioning. Then you have a certain budget, and on this budget, you have to drive your decommissioning home. And of course, there's also a lot of process change. In, in When the power plant is running, no matter if it's a nuclear or fossil power plant, um, the process is, is quite clear, produce energy. But if you're going into decommissioning, this changes a lot. You may have processes that you only conduct once, and then it's done. Um, the respective part is... is um, decommissioned and it is gone as it's packed as waste and you will never see this again and you will never do this process again. So the, the knowledge management is in this environment is relevant. <clears throat> we need on one hand a, a pre preservation of the operational history. Did something happen in this area at, at uh, some part in, in the during the operation of the, of the plant? You have of course the generational changes that uh, are also occurring uh, in these plants, often um, a power plant has a, an operational duration that's about the lifetime of an engineer, for example. And uh, so when you go into decommissioning, a lot of people go into retirement and you need to, to catch up all the, the knowledge they still have. But also the uh, supply chain uh, interaction changes drastically. Um, during the operation, for example, a nuclear power plant is always aware of their processes. But when it comes to decommission, this is something they have no, never done before. But the companies um, from the supply chain, like ours, they will have done this before. And they will have much more experience in decommissioning than the, the, the power plant itself. And um, yeah, this is for us, are all the things that we need to, to capture in, in our knowledge management system. And uh, we like Semantic Media Wiki very much because it, it allows us to follow a tailored approach here. I will now um, explain a little bit the surroundings, the Play Artists uh, 2020 project. Um, the idea is um, that a lot of um, approaches in, in modern decommissioning use um, building information management or other 3D information. Um, most of these uh, applications are very specific standalone tools, and the major effect, um, effort um, to use these tools is the, the generation of the data. Thus, we, we come to the conclusion it would be very helpful to reuse the 3D models and the BIM information uh, for engineering, radiation protection, costing, and many more things. So what we are aiming for is a common platform with a defined interface that would allow to use all these tools uh, from the same data set. And this is also where uh, Semantic Media Wiki as our tool for, for knowledge management comes in because we would then also like to connect Semantic Media Wiki to the same platform in order to manage all this data that is not necessarily um, connected to 3D. It, it might be completely overdone, for example, if you move a waste drum from one room to another to do this in the 3D model, this is much easier than in, in Semantic Media Wiki and then update it automatically in the 3D model. Um, we have a list of participants. So this is a very wide um, range of, of companies and, and institutions, ranging from uh, the probably largest partner, that's EDF in France, the, the big utility. Um, and we are certainly, as IOS, are one of the SME companies, and we are on the totally other um, um, range of this of the scale, <clears throat> but we have also some uh, re research institutions such as KIT in Karlsruhe, um, or also VTT. That's part of this uh, approach. 
The technology that we say is we have a, a data layer that contains the 3D data, contains radiological data, the physical inventory, processes, resources, and tasks. And we then have the BIM exchange format uh, that we are currently developing. And this will provide uh, APIs to all the existing applications. And then um, a company that is going to, to enter the commissioning can choose from all these applications based on the same data model, uh, have different UIs, of course, uh, but then can also um, yeah, uh, apply to this for, for different uh, customers and different applications. So, well, I, I don't tell you anything about ontologies and taxonomies. I think um, this is would be a waste of time. <laughs> You're probably much more knowledgeable here than I am. Why did we try to, to develop an ontology for play artists? The, the difficulty is that we have all these software already existing. So just making data connections would be very tricky because each of the software has, has its own history, its own terms, its own concepts. So these direct interfaces would be very, very difficult to generate, in, uh, to generate and especially also to, um, to maintain. What we need is a common understanding of the decommissioning process itself between the subject matter experts uh, on the first part, but then also between the subject matter experts and the data scientists that actually make the connections between the softwares. Um, the, the development approach that we had is not to, in, to reinvent the wheel and to use what is um, available, established and suitable so the one, one of the of the really core parts is certainly IFC, the uh, industry foundation class, that gives us all the three D information. But there are some things missing for um, decommissioning speci specifically uh, in order to get all the information across, for example, for radiation protection that we actually need. The developments. Steps are those of uh, yeah are well described uh, in in much earlier um, research papers. It's the definition of of uh, boundaries. Then we captured the the concepts from the subject matter experts. We had a series of discussions um, and captured this on mind maps first. Had then several topical workshops where we looked into specific parts of the ontology and had a, a final review workshop with external participants that were not part of the core team in order to um, have some kind of, of review um, of, of the um, uh, ontology so far. Um, we also did then some reality checks and tried to apply the ontology to, to real projects just on, on basis, can we describe a, a project um, on, on basis of, of this ontology? And then we uh, went the final step into the formalization. That means we um, applied a, a simple knowledge organization system, the definitions, translations, because we have seen that there were many participants of different countries, so we needed to have a translation layer, and we went into the OWL format. This is a, an example of the, of the feedback collection workshop. We conducted this in, in Mural, so you can see we laid the, the ontology there and then we collected all the remarks from um, all the participants and, and also collected uh, their overall feedback to the process. This is how the ontology looks in the moment. <clears throat> so this is only showing the, the top level of the, of the ontology, but we try to, to get all these <coughs> different tasks together and, and uh, there are assets inside. The assets, for example, have all the, the building information, but they ha have also all the, all the plant information uh, that's necessary to describe uh, a, total, uh, a power plant. We have then the tasks. Um, we have associated with the tasks uh, scenarios, how to conduct the tasks. These lead to, to risks uh, and, and so on. To give you an example of what's behind all this, uh, for risk, for example, we have then uh, in the ontology the definition, the effect of uncertainty of objectives according to ISO 31000. And then you can see the taxonomy that's below um, this top level for the risk. So this is now the decommissioning specific, of course, where we have collected all the risks 
um, that are inside such a project. Uh, the formalization was done in, in Workbench. That's also um, been established by the University of Rome um, in, in a, a EU project um, and gives uh, approximately the, the same functionality like other tools, like for example, Pool Party, um, but in, on an open source basis. So the conclusions so far are the ontology will be um, the basis of the of the overall Pleiades project. <clears throat> the provision of an interface um, will only work if, if all the participants of the project have a common understanding of, of the content and over uh, of the overall decommissioning project. Um, this has some more difficulties than you would probably would anticipate in the in the first beginning because the decommissioning strategy and, and how the decommissioning is conducted is very much depending on uh, the regulatory environment in your country. Um, so <clears throat> it's, it's not, um, yeah, not very similar from, from the first view. If you look in Germany or, or if you look, for example, in France, um, the decommissioning projects are conducted differently but nevertheless, we need a, an ontology that is capable to describe it in, in both cases. The development has followed a top-down approach um, where we have um, ensured uh, compatibility, uh, for example, with this um, approach by the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency uh, for, for the top layer. But we have also uh, a bottom-up approach where it come from the existing software and try to uh, figure out how it can be connected to the ontology to make sure that we will have the later um, compatibility that we are looking for. Um, yeah, the the alignment with with other approaches, I will come to this in a, in a moment. Um, is is has additional benefits. Uh, we had um, caused by the by the project a rather narrow time window. And uh, of course, uh, there is certainly also a, a clear limit to the cooperation by the funding scheme and the financial capabilities of the of the companies. the The basic benefit that we see is that um, the the use of ontologies, and I think this has also been made very clear by the um, by the presentation from Bayer that we have heard before is the, the interoperability that this allows us. So we can not only describe the, the DECOM operation, what we want to do with, with this project and connect it to the 3D model. We can use specific software, but we can also connect to, to knowledge bases. We have, uh, and this was part of the um, speeches that I've given in, in this community before, we have also been part in developing a knowledge base for the uh, International Atomic Energy agency for decommissioning in Vienna. And of course, if we are using a, an, an ontology that is the basis of both these systems, we can also connect the, the knowledge base with case studies, with examples, with best practices to the very um, decommissioning project and can uh, then also uh, have a connection um, to, to um, yeah, help the decision making, for example, of the engineers in a, in a concrete um, setting. But this is also helpful in connecting to the internal uh, knowledge management system, like in our case, uh, based on Semantic Media Wiki. <coughs> in, in parallel to our um, approach, a, a working group that has been formed by IAEA, OECD, NIA, that's the energy agency, uh, nuclear energy agency of the OECD, and uh, the joint research centers of the European Union has formed and worked out uh, an ontology and they are specifically more looking into taxonomies uh, for managing the, the knowledge of the commissioning. So there's a certain difference between the two ontologies because uh, our ontology focuses on, on managing and, and planning of uh, the decommissioning project where the, the um, ontology of this groups focuses more on, on managing <clears throat> the knowledge on decommissioning. Um, but the, the interaction between both groups um, were quite good and we, we achieved um, a compatibility on, on this ontological basis. 
And we also think that um, this ontological basis is also a, a basis for a further digitalization of the commissioning um, for the use of, of AI or machine learning. And we are already seeing now that um, we are looking into further applications of this ontology, for example, for the uh, provision of uh, robotics and for the uh, implementation of robotics in these environments. That's it from my side. Um, I try to keep it short and not too um, too deep into into the nuclear field. And I'm looking forward to your um, questions, discussions, if there should be any. Thank you very much, Franz. Do we have any questions? Uh, that doesn't look like it's probably too like far away from the <laughs> <laughs> normal uh, SMB uh, usage. Yeah, but uh, oh, there, is, there, is, there is one. You mentioned the connection of concepts by core properties. So did you somehow mix cos and owl? And knowledge representation, how did you implement cos vocabularies in general in SMW? Um, yes, this this has not been done in in SMW, but this is part of the the Vogbench approach that then uh, allows us to have this cost around each of the concepts um, that we then use um, as as classes in in SMW. So each of the concepts in in SCOS will be one class in in uh, SMW, and this will then allow us to. Um, yeah, to, to connect on one hand the, the knowledge management part where we need SCOS because we also need a little bit the, the fuzziness, for example, um, in the in the descriptions. Um, and on the uh, other hand, we, we um, need the, the SMV for, for the, the simple management of, of things. And I think this is the, 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 the good part from our side uh, of this approach is that we on one hand can, can use the, the very sophisticated BIM models and can do all this fancy engineering there, uh, but probably two thirds of the people running around in this plant will never need this because they simply have to move, they have to do log logistics, for example, they have to move um, some, some waste bins from one room to another. But this then changes the radiation environment, it changes, uh, for example, the fire load, and all you have to keep track of all these things. And this is much easier than in, in Semantic Media Wiki and this will now be one of, of the next aims. And I was uh, very excited also to, to learn about Otter uh, because the, the task now will be to, yeah, for, for our um, understanding to automatically generate some, um, some structure inside Semantic Media Wiki directly from the ontology. And we've seen some, some approaches that, yeah, look very, uh, very good from our side and, and we are very interested and I'm, I'm certain we will uh, yeah, use some of the connections that we see here today um, to look deeper into this and probably yeah, find some um, connections where we can work together. Okay, thank you. Um, my, my question was, was kind of related. I've heard about Walkbench. Walk mm -hmm. I've, not, I've not dived into it yet, but... Um, Generally speaking, what would you what would you say? How how do how does Walkbench relate to Semantic Media Wiki? Is it as you described it something where you would set up the ontology before that you can reuse in Semantic Media Wiki? Yeah, or... that's that's the intention. So we we yeah. we've done the the basic um, construction of the ontology with with simple mind maps, but then at some part you need to formalize it, and then then you could um, we, we looked into uh, Protege. But this had some difficulties um, when when exporting and and when uh, granting access for for a whole group, and so uh, <coughs> we ended up in in having pool party that would be um, a quite similar um, um, possibility to to work with. But uh, of course, uh, it's at a at a price, <laughs> um, and. Um, uh, so, so IAEA, for example, is using both Pool Party and Workbench, and uh, so we looked into Workbench and said, well, it's it's uh, quite convenient for for our usage so far. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I don't see further questions currently, so um, okay. we have some minutes uh, to take a short break, and we'll be back in three minutes okay. with the next talk. Thank you, Franz. Thanks a lot, Bernhard.